Crazy Tony has only two years till the next election, and all his credibility has got to go. So it's time to tax the carbon tax. Fact, without carbon, all our carbonated beverages will go flat, just like the earth. Ax the tax. Fact, if we replace water with carbon, we could stop the boats. Ax the tax. Fact, it's Adam and Eve, not Adam and carbon tax. Ax the tax. With election promises like these and no election, you'd be nuts to miss out. So vote to ax the tax before Crazy Tony flips his lid. It's good news, Lee. Someone dropped a bomb somewhere in contaminated the atmosphere and blackening the sky. It's good news, Lee. Someone found a way to give the running dead the will to live, go on and never die. It's good news, Lee. It's good news, Lee. It's good news, Lee. Thank you very much. Welcome to Good News Week, coming tonight from the Ricky Nixon Inappropriate Youth Centre <laughs> as part of the 2011 Melbourne International Comedy Festival. <laughs> and the big news, we're doomed, doomed, Australia, we're doomed. According to a new survey, a lack of leadership in this country has left us all feeling more uncertain, uneasy and unsettled. <laughs> about our future than ever before. That can't be right. Julia Gillard is leading. It's just that no one is following. <laughs> the survey found out our she'll be right attitude has morphed into she might be right. <laughs> Unless you're Tony Abbott, in which case she is definitely wrong. <laughs> we're filled with uncertainties, I think. Aren't we? Maybe we're not. Or are we? I'm not sure. <laughs> we don't know if we're facing droughts or floods. Don't know if we should be saving polar bears or culling koalas. We don't know if we're living in the lucky country or the asshole of the world. <laughs> Somewhere along the line, the boxing kangaroo of happiness got tangled in the barbed wire fence of reality and run over by the road train of interest rates. <laughs> we can't afford a house, and even if we could, it'd probably be destroyed by fire or an earthquake or a cyclone. Yeah, looks like we're gonna have to give our homes back to their traditional owners, the banks. <laughs> Here's some good news. Scientists in Brazil have created a new type of plastic for making cars. <laughs> Not very exciting, I hear you. <laughs> I hear you say. Well, shut your face because <laughs> this plastic is made from fruit. <laughs> plastic made from fruit. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Because what the world really needs is less food and more cars. <laughs> this means your next car could actually be a lemon. <laughs> oh, oh, the love, the love for the love. Just add sugar and you've got traffic jam. <laughs> it's for the children. It's for the children, all right? Although, if you are in a fruit car accident, you could end up, I don't know, a vegetable. <laughs> Is it a question of tone again? <laughs> the exhaust? <laughs> the exhaust has very low carbon emissions, but compared to other cars, extremely high levels of aphids. A little bit of confusion there, but the aphid is a small. <laughs> Get on your road, you've got a spray for them, right? <laughs> the vehicles are already so popular, there's even a bumper sticker on the market already. It says, if this car's rockin', I'm probably being attacked by fruit bats. <laughs> and that's the good news! Uh, thank you. Good evening. Tonight, in a breathtaking cavalcade of local and international stars, the drinking woman's sex <laughs> symbol, Mikey Robbins! It's true. It's true. 
Last time she was at the festival, she won the coveted Barry Award. She's starring right here at the Town Hall, and she's the strange and wonderful voice of reason, Maria Bamford. And coming to the Athenaeum next week after gigs in New South Wales, Brisbane and Canberra, master of improv, acting, stand-up and beyond, the wonderful Greg Proops. <laughs> and they're joined in mouth-to-mouth -mouth combat with the extra-tasty Claire Hooper. <laughs> Selling out at the Athenaeum as we speak with Cirque de Byrne before heading to Perth and Sydney, the sweetly unhinged Jason Byrne. <laughs> And also starring here at the Town Hall before coming to the Enmore in Sydney with his new show, the best medicine actor, chef, stylish man of comedy, <laughs> Stephen K. Amos. Uh, chef? I don't know where that came from. Chef? No, I don't cook. I can't cook. I mistook uh, chicken for duck. So I'm a shit uh, cook. Where did you, did you ever do any chef? I, well, I did Master Chef in the UK. It was really awful. I said to me, what kind of food don't you eat? And I said, I don't eat offal. Who eats offal? Are we at war? I, I eat parts of the pig the pig won't lick. <laughs> <laughs> and they got me in a live restaurant making um, sweetbreads. Yeah. You know, like, oh, disgusting. Mm. I can't believe, why would you call them sweetbreads? Exactly, they're disgusting Why would you call people? them meat lumps? Before you find a, a sweetbread, I've got to mention as well that you have a, a DVD out. That's my, my latest one, recorded last year, and it's out in all good retailers. You look like a really shit video shop. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, oh sorry, DVD video. <laughs> video. Yeah. Hey kids. Yeah, Betamax. Yeah. 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 Oh sorry Claire, left your hanging yeah. there. VHS. Yeah. Do you know that my, when we bought our video recorder, we weren't allowed to tell anybody on the street we had one because my dad was afraid somebody was going to rob it because we were the only ones with it. It was 600 quid for a video recorder. Wow. Can you believe that? I, I can believe Still it. Still paying it off. Top loader. <laughs> yes. Top loader. Yeah. None of that shit. <laughs> 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 In fact, that's the first time I ever got my first ever porn on a tape. Betamax, yeah. The whole family were out. I thought, yeah, it's gonna be good. I got some candles, scented candles. Man-sized tissues. <laughs> Pressed play and just was like, yeah. And I thought it was like five hours, but two minutes, mate. <laughs> and I, I kind of, you know, press stop with a sticky finger. Uh, Later on that evening, I think it was a Sunday, where all the whole family were gathered, I think we were watching Songs of Praise. <laughs> that finished, and my dad said, What is in the machine? <laughs> He's Chinese. And, uh, <laughs> he presses play, and of course, it's at that moment, and my mum's like, yeah! <laughs> Jumps up out of her chair like a ninja, hits the stop button with such force that it jams the machine and the picture just goes, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> So embarrassing. Oh, dear. I'm kind of nostalgic for the sweetbread story now. <laughs> uh, Greg Proops, love to have you here. How are you? I'm well, Paul. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Uh, what are you bringing to our country? Uh, I'm not here to invade, because mm. I understand, but if any oil is discovered while I'm here, it might happen. <laughs> uh, I've come down to do shows all over the country, and then I'm going to go to your neighboring country, uh, New Zealand, yeah. and uh, <laughs> that all will be exciting too. I do a podcast as well uh, for the people who are internets oriented. Um, it's called The Smartest Man in the World, uh, and yes, I'm in it. <laughs> And uh, I'm here to do this show, of course, as well, and uh, listen to stories uh, of people watching pornography with their family. Mm. <laughs> I tend to watch it alone and then call my family after crying. <laughs> and Maria, lovely to have you here as yes, well. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited uh, to improvise. <laughs> Are you familiar with the improvisational work? so much. I hope uh, to be uh, doing a lot of rehearsed uh, improv. Okay. <laughs> That's the hardest kind. I did it for years. <laughs> uh, you've been absent from our shores for a while. Yes. When were you last here? I was here in, uh, I think, 2005. Okay. Oh, not the good time? Yes. Oh, no, I had a great time. I had a great time. I just uh, spent a lot of time uh, in the U.S. Uh, preparing for this year's show. <laughs> 
No, I... I let you go far. But how's it going thus far? I can't get any better. I'm doing a very good job. Um, you really are terrific. Yeah, I am very proud of myself. Uh, Jason Byrne, oh, having hello. fun? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is great. Cirque de Byrne, you bring circus skills to the... Nope. Oh. <laughs> uh, there's skipping, there's plate spinning, there's testicle playing with xylophone sticks, there's uh, more s skipping, and then there's uh, s uh, hurdles with men in spanks. It's amazing, you, you could have been describing Stephen's video. <laughs> uh, that's why I recognise your face. Uh, no. It's, it's warm, isn't it? Oh, my It's warm in here. It's, I'm sweating like a fat nun's undies. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is hot in here, but I sweat all the time. I sweat in the shower. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> you guys, maintain your respectful silence. <laughs> Uh, we start with what's the story, team versus team, best answer, gets the points. Yes. Players, don't fail, don't let these good people down. I can't chuckles. <laughs> Look at you. What's going on there? Who could oh. that possibly be? That's Kimberly O'Brien. She's a child psychiatrist. Oh. oh. There's keys. computers, fingers, oh. Facebook. Oh, Facebook. Oh, that's Facebook. 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 I see you. I, I, Facebook. I prefer the, uh, the drunken version. Off my Facebook. <laughs> that's it? That's all you're getting? Anybody? Oh, Anybody? That's it? Okay, there's a, a child psychiatrist. Yeah. Can I say that I like it? Yeah, you like it? Yeah, I'm, I'm pressing like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know what? Is, is it okay to friend a child psychologist? That's not pervy, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, but, well, one of the problems is uh, because there's been you know, people going on and, and setting up Facebook pages, and sometimes they don't go as well as they'd like them to. Mm -hmm. In fact, they don't get poked anywhere near enough, and... Uh, <laughs> And people are suffering from depression, being a little bit upset. That, yeah, I know, it's, it's a dreadful thought. You're making a sad face. Well, I'd like to poke people if they need it. <laughs> That's exceedingly generous of yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, anything you want to add to that? This, this psychologist is saying that mean social interactions on Facebook are potentially even more hurtful than in real life. And so they've sort of bandied about this term Facebook depression. But it's like they're talking about young people not being able to manage the, the kind of betrayals and and bullying and that sort of thing. No, that's just nonsense, though. I mean, in our era, we didn't have Facebook and computers. No, we had, I, we, I, I we, did. No, no, you didn't. <laughs> we, had, we had pen pals. Remember that? I oh, remember pen pals. Pen pals. People, people now getting bullied on Facebook and... <laughs> if you get bullied on Facebook, delete. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't have little personal devices you could carry to school. Now, kids are so high-tech and... They're so easily and over-entertained, they can watch a movie on the way to school or, you know, talk to a predator in Cincinnati or whatever. <laughs> we had to talk to predators up close and personal, you know? <laughs> I mean, I don't even know what a predator would do now at a schoolyard. They roll down their window, hey, I've got candy. Kids are like, fuck you, I'm on a low-carb diet, you know? <laughs> That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Give a big round of applause for all of them. Doctors are warning of a new medical condition affecting teenagers who obsess over social networking. Facebook depression. Sad face. Why the long Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> I can understand why... <laughs> I can understand why Facebook makes people depressed. It can be a shock to discover that you're really, really uninteresting. <laughs> Still, it's not just young people. Facebook can also be depressing for a lot of middle-aged users who can't find a decent picture of their face to upload. So be vigilant, mums and dads. All this social networking is causing depression in your teenagers. And it must be the social networking. Because teenagers are usually the pinnacle of emotional stability. <laughs> so after one anti-social round of Good News Week, the Robbins team are on six points, the Hooper team are on four points! Yes, we're in. <laughs> this never happened. Coming up, perfection! During the break, as we didn't prepare an acceptance speech for the Logies, both teams were given six clues to one strange but true story. Tonight we have a monster from the deep. And they say you can't overfeed a goldfish. <laughs> 
Used to be one of the greatest comic minds we had in this country. Now look at him. <laughs> now he's the Kraken. <laughs> once, once this show's over, I am so laying my eggs in your dressing room. I already did. <laughs> <laughs> so did I. Oh, have I uh, we also have progress. This is Tony Abbott's climate change solution. Really, really little oil rigs. <laughs> Uh, we also have education. Oh, yes. <laughs> what, what century was that from? <laughs> uh, we also have control. control. Yeah, that's, control. Uh, that's me. Hang on a okay. second. I was oh. getting this oh. shit going. <laughs> All right. Oh. That's amazing. That's how Paul gets to work. <laughs> Not the hair. <laughs> Not the hair. Come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, there goes the show. Oh, my God. I'm so doing that again. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Hold me a second. Take your time. No, okay, sorry, okay. There, I got it again. Oh, did you, did you hear that? It's smoke, it's smoke. There's a man. Uh, artificial intelligence we have as well. Fly! Oh, dear God. <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> oh, my God, Greg! <laughs> He's, like, so dead. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll have it fixed by the end of the show. <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> Your thing's all bent. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> and finally, we have this. This, yes. Woo. Give a warm, loud thunderous welcome to Mr. Eddie Perfect. Hello, Eddie. Welcome to the room. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You've just missed, um, Greg uh, killed a robot. Yeah. Right. I yeah. bent my aerial. Oh, hello. <laughs> Your aerial was going to be soft one way and another. <laughs> you have a, uh, you've got a new show, I believe? I do. I have a show called Miss Anthropology at the Melbourne Comedy Festival. It's about, I guess, bored, rich Westerners living in the developed world, smashing their empty heads against the glass ceiling of evolution. It's quite cheery. No. <laughs> With songs, with songs. I'm sorry, I've just become mesmerised by my own light. <laughs> and have you got a, a clue for us today? I do. I will follow you. Follow you wherever you may go. And near you I'll always will be. Cause nothing can keep my destiny I will follow you Ever since you touched my fin I knew There isn't an ocean too deep A mountain so high you can keep Keep me away Any perfect We'll be back with more stuff. Keep more. Back soon. It's good news week. Now to the bizarro world we call News Flash. First in, no waiting, 
Here we go. Okay. Still no buzzers now. No, no buzzers. We can't afford them. Have you noticed? Have you seen a buzzer? I know, but every time I come on, I ask for one. It still yeah. hasn't appeared. But they can still make a fucking fish head. <laughs> Jesus recently appeared at a shop in Brisbane. What was this miracle? He was out the front with two manly players having a wee. <laughs> oh, uh, he appeared in something. He's always doing yes. that. He usually appears in bread. Or toast, yeah. Bread bread toast. Toast. Maria, are you across the story? Potatoes. No, I'm not. A, a, this is exciting news. <laughs> uh, is there a God? I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, he... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, did Jesus, did, uh, I mean, uh, not to be trivial about it, but it was flooding in Queensland, the whole Brisbane area. Yes. So was Jesus there walking on water? Ah. <laughs> hey. No, no. Do you know, in, uh, you know this, uh, Jason, there's a place in Ireland called Knock, and lots of people flock to Knock because it's now a religious shrine. I know it is. Because apparently, like, hundreds of years ago, a statue of the Virgin Mary was seen to cry mm. on the same day it was raining. <laughs> yeah, but it was blood. Oh, was it? Yeah. No. Yeah. Serious? Just... No. <laughs> <laughs> That's how Irish people sell stuff to the rest of the world. <laughs> it was blood. <laughs> it was the book. Okay, so, so, so Jesus appeared in a shop front in Brisbane. Um... No, but why? Why in what Brisbane? Was it? Was he there because there's like 300 shopping days left till his birthday? <laughs> 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 Bread isn't on the right lines. Yes, it's a donut. doughy. It's a doughy thing. Was, Don't. It, was it not a donut? Did you not a donut? donut? No. Pizza? Pizza, you yes. have it. Oh, no. We actually have an image of the blessed pizza. Wow. Actually, I, I believe that's called the new Pizza Hut God Lovers Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> that's not Jesus, that's James Franco. <laughs> uh, in California, a woman convicted of forging drug prescriptions could be in for a longer sentence. What did she do? Because she signed it Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> <laughs> was it Viagra? Anything like that? And she no. usually Viagra. Did she dress up as a doctor? No. Did she pretend she was a surgeon? Has surgery? anyone read she, any of the news this week? Yes, of course. I've did just come from Hollywood and I'm intimately acquainted with this. <laughs> she was writing her own prescriptions uh, for Oxycontin, which is amazingly strong. So strong that Keith Richards would go, no, I got a gig in two weeks. <laughs> Is it contempt of court? Did she get that? Was it it is, yes. It's yeah. along those lines. Is it contempt of court? Did she give the, the forgery jury line? drugs? Did she huh? forge her own court Thank documents? you very much, you oh, forged Oh, yeah, 50 points. <laughs> Come on, this thing. You know what it is, though? She, uh, she got it all wrong, right? Because mm. uh, prescriptions, you know, we can all get those. But the one thing that gets us out of anything is the power of the note. Remember, your mum gives you a note. Mm. Yeah? yeah? Amos, get undressed for sports. No! Why? I've got a note. <laughs> Mum says, not in these shoes. Yeah, so what she did was, uh, she was meant to be at court. She wasn't there, so she forged a note from a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. Uh, here's the last one. A Swedish couple on their honeymoon in this part of the world oh, oh, recently oh, had an... Oh, oh, let go, by the way. No, we can finish it now. Come on, finish it off. It's the honeymoon story, the honeymoon. isn't it? It's the honeymoon story. It was story. amazing. We got to interview her on radio. And you on know what? the story, Stephen? Oh, on the radio. radio. On the radio. Oh, Tell everyone. Oh, on the radio. Oh, they come here, they make fun of our accent, they take our money and go away. <laughs> you, don't, you guys don't have a recession. <laughs> we do. That's so I take your dollar, I go home. <laughs> um, actually, can what I happened, just... What happened to your voice there? I don't know what happened. Either. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Can I do that too as well? No, that's racist if you do it. <laughs> no. I mean... Can I do my accent? Yes. No, so, oh, is that how it works? So, yes. if I do your voice, that's racist. Yeah. But if I do my Irish voice, that's not racist. But if you do my Irish voice... If I do your Irish voice, yes. that, Is that racist? <laughs> Just a little bit racist. Just a little bit racist. Yes. So, can I... But I can do this. Yes. And that's fine. That's all right. So that's not... It's not racist. But, the, but what if I do this? Oh, bad. Oh. <laughs> Just trying to find the barriers. Couldn't work it out there. Do they actually have an answer? Yeah. It's uh, this unfortunate couple from Sweden um, who uh, went on honeymoon and literally everywhere they stopped, 
they met or were in touch with all the natural disasters that have recently happened. Yeah. yeah. They were in uh, Munich Brisbane. for the snowstorm of the century, then they went to Bali for the monsoon, then they went to Perth for the bushfires, and then they went to Brisbane and got caught in the floods, and then they went up to Cairns and they were in an emergency vac centre, and then they touched out in Christchurch just as the earthquake had happened. <laughs> And then they went to Japan and they were in Tokyo when the earthquake hit. And then they went to China and she got a bad cold. <laughs> a well earned five points. Yes. The Rodman's Roosters dragging the chain now to miserable 16 points. The Hooper Hawks in the front with 24 points, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Up next, so you think you can mime. It's the mime. Uh, it's time for a mime. Greg Proops, Jason Byrne, you're up. Oh. Come and oh. join me. Oh. Okay, here's what you have to mime, fellas. All right. There we go. What? After. Holy kittens! What? Oh, okay. Now, do you want to take this with you so you can uh, yeah, 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 you know, chat yeah. about it? No, a bit of a chat. Here, I'm going to lose these uh, yeah. just because because this might get physical. Oh. <laughs> All I'm right. going to uh, keep mine on so I don't walk off the goddamn stage. <laughs> That's okay, Greg. Yeah. I'm sure it's fine anyway. I can, I can find out where you too. Uh, Greg and Jason are going to do uh, the mime together. Same story for both teams. The first lot who can decipher it and explain it to me takes the points. Your time starts now. Your time starts now. Walker! Walker! What? Walker! Old lady! Old lady! Old lady! Old lady! Old lady! Hermaphrodites! No, no, no. I'm in I'm in the I'm in the I'm in the house. I'm in the house. I'm in the house. Early man. Okay, could okay. Old lady goes to goes to someone's house. What look me I'm gonna do it. Okay, old lady goes to hello. attracted to. Went over to the neighbour's house for a little bit of old person loving, or as we call it, bumping uglies, and um, and was was rebuffed. So so I believe she was American, so maybe might have gone to the gun yes. to get some loving back and then jumped on top of the Actually, no! Steve, take over! <laughs> Steve's video as well. <laughs> What's happening? 
Well, <laughs> see, I, okay, well, that, that, I know the same story as you. Yeah, and yeah, I, but... yeah, and it's the old, an old woman who, and he was like, he was 40 years her junior or something, yes. she shot him because he rebuffed her? Yeah. yeah. That's oh. it, basically. I think but we've all got it. What... Oh, no, I've got it. Okay, we you've got, got it. it. Oh, let's change it. Can you please thank the brilliant Greg Group, Jason Berg. that team got the points, I'd like to express my gratitude to Jason for taking it for the team. Yeah. Uh, I'm so 90... tired now. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to take a nap and watch TV. You know what, he's, he's never going to call you again. I right know. A 92-year-old by the name of Helen has been arrested in Florida after shooting at the 53-year-old neighbour who refused to kiss him. Oh. Walk swiftly for cover. It's a mobility scooter drive bar. 92, ladies and gentlemen, 92 years old. She hit her sexual peak at 40 and kept on peeking, mostly through the bathroom window. <laughs> Helen gave her neighbour, Dwight, a choice. The gums or the gun? Dwight said no to the gums. So she got a pistol and fired four rounds into his house, shattering a window. Imagine what she would have done if he'd refused to fuck her. <laughs> I think we did. Dwight says... Dwight says he refused to kiss her because he's already in a relationship. Otherwise, he'd totally tap that geriatric poontang. <laughs> now, I think, uh, I think you might call it prune-tang at that point. <laughs> <laughs> to my right now, 40 points. To my left, 35 points. After the break, pretty pictures. This is Clash of the Titans, and it's a little bit different uh, this week. Normally we do a general knowledge, but uh, I was recently at a, at a film showing, so this is a bit of entertainment news, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, we might try some science fiction questions. Uh, I'm just going to show you a bit of a clip from the, the film, so I can give you a bit of an idea of what I saw. Can you just have a look at this, please? I really need your help. I don't know, we're on quite a tight schedule. What's the matter, Clive? There is an alien in the kitchenette making bagels and coffee. Does you want tea? No, I don't want tea. Ooh, Marmite. What if we wake up and find him inserting a probe into our anus? They don't do that. You ever want one of these? Yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, your Titans tonight from space. Shaun of the Dead Hot Fuzz and the Chiquito Mexican Restaurant in North London in Australia with their new big budget blockbuster. Paul, can you please welcome to the stage the awesome Simon Pegg and Nick Frost. <laughs> Over here, and I'll have a chat. Oh, you've got old mates over there, I believe. Yeah. yeah. You're an old mate in a way. Am I? Yeah, in oh, Edinburgh. Yeah. When I was a student, we did a little gig with the Doug Anthony All Stars. Oh, okay. We were called God's Third Leg. And yes. uh, you did a show, and then we were the only ones in the audience. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> It was, like a, it was like a lunchtime warm-up gig, and you guys did a show, and you were amazing. And we were all little drama students, and we got up to entertain you afterwards, and we did a song, a Half Man, Half Biscuit cover. Yeah. And you were really supportive, and you said you were good. we were good even though we were shit. Wow. <laughs> I think we have a little, a little something for you. Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a, a special edition poster of the film that we've done that we'd like to <laughs> offer. Like, like, to the crowd. So, uh... Can we have a look at it? That's right? That's his, that's his actual body, lads. <laughs> <laughs> well, lovely. Should we start our little thing? Let's yes. do it. Okay. 
17, I was 17 years old. Oh. You were like a god to me. You, you guys were so good. You, you were all sexy and you had tight trousers on. You did a lot of thrusting in those days. I love thrusting. My back's gone now, I can't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> really, it was all I had too. That's, uh, after that, there was nothing. <laughs> Still got the hair though. Yeah. Right, Thank God. It's all over my fucking body now. <laughs> It's like, a, it's like a hedge down here, the underwear just cuts into it and it splays. Oh, you're still here. Uh, these two Jedi warriors will face each other on the field of science fiction. First in gets the points. And remember your names are your buzzers. Let's yeah. test them. We're going to go with our Australian names, which we're called here, okay. always. Thymo and Nico. There we go. <laughs> oh. Uh, what is the first sentence in the opening crawl of Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope? Zymo, it is a period of civil war. Oh, he's got it, ladies and gentlemen. Give him a wild applause. A quick lunge. He's still got it. Uh, apart from Richard Dreyfus, who else appeared in both Jaws and Close Encounters? That's a good one. Is it the special effects man? Uh, no. Is it, is it? Is it the shark? No, but we're getting closer with the, the hill, animal idea. The, hill, the, oh, the doggy. Is it Morgan Freeman? Or was it so, their so, dog? So, 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 the family dog. Like, e Buzz. No, that's from whose dog was it? Whose dog was it? Uh, Rory Neer is no. <laughs> mine. You did a bit of a voice. Spielberg's dog. Film. Thank you very much. Whoa. You got a dog. Hicks pulling at home. Where are you, Frosty? Oh yeah, that was a lovely fact. Yeah. Steven Spielberg's dog. Was it? Great name for a band. Steven Spielberg's dog. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in. <laughs> uh, by what name is Susan Alexandra Weaver better known? Nico. Thank you. Sigourney. Thank you very much, Sigourney Weaver. He's got it. <laughs> you got to bite Sigourney Weaver. I did got to. I did got to bite her. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Everyone's got to bite her. Uh, it was. It was amazing. What does she taste like? She said. Uh, she tasted like gorillas in the mist. <laughs> 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 I think in me she saw some of the silverback. So at first when she came on set she wouldn't make eye contact and she'd trace a ring around my hand and she put if some... I looked at her she'd grab some, she'd look <laughs> away and eat. And... So it's a gonny weeby, you know, we're, we're nerds and we're geeks so when we get, you know, at first when she came on set she kind of st stood off a little bit and me and Simon just stood looking at her, just <laughs> like that. We're just like that and then we were like, I wish you going to talk to her. Let's go and talk to her. Come on, talk to her. <laughs> and then we just kind of went over and we said, Do you want to come and sit with us? <laughs> That's all we could think to say. <laughs> Who came from the planet Scaro? <laughs> Simon, what is, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Sorry. I was in the wrong show. Um, Simo, the Gedaleks. Thank you. Got oh, it. thinking time. Round of applause. Come on. Yeah, you've got to get in, get, get in there with the glass. Yeah. That's my, that's my victory stance. <laughs> Jason Bateman is a god, isn't he? Nico. That wasn't a question, I was just <laughs> making a statement. Yes, he is. He's a god. Sing the next line of this song, there's Klingons on the starboard bow. Simon. Starboard bow, starboard bow. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> any more? You got any more? It's worse than that, Jim. No, it's... Go on, Jason. Starboard bow, starboard... Captain. <laughs> Scrape them off, Jim. Scrape I've got him. Scrape them yeah, off, Jim. Right. Here we go. What's the name of the comprehensive Star Wars database that can be edited by members of the public? Simo. Yes. Wikipedia. Thank oh. you very much. <laughs> very good. I need to come up with like a, a pose of defeat. <laughs> Okay. Playing it. I've got it. All right. Uh, what is it? I haven't lost yet, but when okay. I do, it will be this. <laughs> slow, okay, it's the slow. sack of the shoulder. Yeah, it is. Okay, good. It's twelve. It's twelve against two at the moment. <laughs> is it? <laughs> is it? Wow. No, it can't be. What name is written on the side of the white mailbox? Nico. Uh, Steve Medlin. Thank you very much. That's what's four your, points. You are. What's your victory pose? It actually says Steve Medlin smokes poles. Oh. Yeah. Someone's poles. written smokes poles, smokes poles underneath. Poles. Smoke poles being... Smokes poles. Cock. Cock. Oh, yeah. thank you. <laughs> Aren't you glad you asked? <laughs> mm, well, now I know. Uh, what is the name of Boba Fett's spaceship? Nico. Yes. Well, Slave one. No. Uh, <laughs> Twelve. Four. <laughs> okay, here's the last one. 
Princess Leia runs in and tells you she's just seen a sand person grooming the banther. <laughs> what was he doing? Simon. He was cleaning his, his ride, his mount. He was taking little fleas out of his fur. Wow. Thank you very much. I would have oh, yes. away as well. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Simon Pegg, Nick Frost, Thank you. Do well. Keep running. Unbelievable. Go and see the film, Paul. Strange but two is next. Time to dive into strange but true school teams. Your clues were the fish. Hello. <laughs> uh, we also have the oil rig. That's an oil rig, all right. Oh! Oh, oh my God! <laughs> Jesus! Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry. BP will pay for that. <laughs> I feel like a seagull. <laughs> uh, we also have the school. The school. Who was the school? You were the school. Oh! <laughs> uh, the remote control. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and yep. the robot. <laughs> <laughs> Stay. And finally, this. Yes, the fabulous voice of the one and only Mr. Eddie Perfect. I will follow you. Follow me. Ever since you touched my fin, I knew there is an ocean duty. A mountain so high you can keep, keep me away Sing it, girls! I love it, I love it, I love it And where he goes, I'll follow, I'll follow, I'll follow He'll always be my true love, 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 my true love. Now and till forever, 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 forever I will follow you Follow you wherever you may go There isn't an ocean Sisters, the best of the Wolfgrams. Hey, I've just realised I've got fish fingers. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, Paul, I have yes. heard Does lots. Yes, have an answer? I've heard lots about well, robot fish. Yeah, I've heard a lot about robot fish. Are it's, they, are they it's, a new, it's a new robot fish that's designed to make friends with other fish. Or that's something. right. Yeah. I, I think I know about this story. Are they looking for oil? No, no but they're, not, they're not looking for oil. The problem is, though, when oil can go wrong like it did in the Gulf, old robot fish might be the fish you're looking for to help them out. Because he can swim in and go, Hi, guys, I'm a fish too, really. Don't let the buzzing noise put you off. <laughs> and I say we go that way to safety. Come, my new fishy friends. And they will go, Right. Because they're in a school. Is this world news? <laughs> <laughs> or is this Australian news? This is, this is world news. Where people sit in a house and go, let's just make up some mad shit for the Australians. <laughs> Mike, you have the right answer. Yep. It's about robot fish that are remote controlled that lead other fish to safety in the event that a benign oil corporation has a small accident that barely hurts anyone. <laughs> there you have it, ladies. It's all been had. 
Engineers at New York University have designed robot fish that could one day save thousands of undersea creatures. The engineers say robot fish could be deployed to lead real fish away from danger and give seals, dolphins and seabirds a high-tech, incredibly expensive new choking hazard. <laughs> oh. A robot fish can fool shoals of real fish into thinking it's their leader, their terrifying metal leader from the future! <laughs> We're just one step away from a robot fish that travels back in time to terminate John West. <laughs> so in Melbourne tonight, Mikey Robbins, Maria Bamford and Greg Proop scored a sensational 72 points! <laughs> Swallowing Claire Hooper, Jason Byrne and Stephen K. Amos on 65 no. points! Yes. Ten.com.au slash GNW is the address to get the podcast. Go behind the scenes or see more of the tragic Jason Byrne Greg Proops love affair. <laughs> <laughs> Next Monday, an even more special Good News Week from the Comedy Festival at the earlier time slot of 8.30. That's 8.30 next Monday. Kids, tell your parents, drunk people, write it down. <laughs> so we say Angry Anderson is Tony Abbott's bitch and leave you with the good news. <laughs> Rose tattoo my ass. Uh, here, in, here in Melbourne, there'll be a fitness party featuring the creator of Zumba. Come along and let him irritate the fat out of you. <laughs> Hopes are high for Thursday's Australasian quilt convention. Well, last year was a bit patchy. In the Orthodox Christian calendar, Saturday celebrates the resurrection of Lazarus. A great day to be dead and then not dead. Also, it's Palm Sunday, the last weekend before Holes in the Palm Friday. <laughs> uh, parts of Victoria Beckham will turn 37. <laughs> and Surrey Cruz will turn five. There'll be a clown at her party, and he'll be banging on about Thetans. 